As flies to wanton boys are we to the gods, they kill us for their sport. That one line spoken by the Earl of Gloucester and Shakespeare's King Lear perhaps best summarizes the underlying sentiment audiences feel as they watch this great tragedy unfold. There is a new production of Lear now playing at the Court Theater, and according to the Wall Street Journal, parts of it will, quote, sear themselves into your memory like mental pictures of an unimaginable disaster. Academy and Tony Award winner Glenda Jackson is King Lear in this new production. The super flux to them and show the heaven more just than heaven. Heart. And she joins us now. Ms. Jackson, welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Well, you know, uh, when I studied Lear in college, um, I knew that the experts considered it or most experts considered it mm. Shakespeare's greatest tragedy, if not his greatest play. But I confess that I didn't like it, because what I saw was this childish despot who had clearly never been contradicted in his own life, and whose own foolish decisions and actions led to his tragic undoing and to the undoing of the one person, perhaps, that he loved most in the world. So I said, you know, karma. Forty years later, <laughs> I agree with the experts, because what I see now is Lear, like all of us, like all of us, not seeing the consequences of his actions until, until it's too late to avoid suffering and disasters. And that has always been the case, and it always will be the case. Absolutely. And, it's, and it's, a, it's a serious truth to confront if you've been around for a few years and have made a few terrible decisions and have paid the consequences. I wonder if your view of Lear has evolved over the years. Well, it's not so much that my view of Lear has evolved over the years. It is that an undeniable part of the genius of Shakespeare is that he really, he really only ever asks three questions. Who are we? Why are we? What are we? Mm. And then no one has come up with truly comprehensive answers yet. But the thing is that human nature is immutable. I mean, the contemporary tropes in this play, which are being reflected as we live our lives now, are just staggering, actually. And we don't change. Hopefully we can, with knowledge and reason, to misquote, um, make the human condition better than it is for all human beings. But our own individual human natures don't change in that you think over time we learn and you, who was it Epstein <laughs> said, you know, the, the madness is making the same mistake time after time after time, expecting a better result mm -hmm. and always getting the same result. Again, I've misquoted, but that's what we do and that's what he does. And, you know, he's not a bad man. He's not a vicious man. It's just that, as you quite rightly said, he's been raised his whole life. No one has ever said no to him. But that is a reflection of the world that he inhabits. And we all inhabit worlds that have their own kind of immutable structures, don't we? Mm -hmm. And it does, yeah. It, and one of the really interesting things for me when I was still a member of parliament, which I used when somebody said to me, you should do this play. As we get older, the kind of gender barriers that are so absolute for us begin to fray. Oh. They begin to fracture, they get a bit foggy. And I thought, yeah, you know, we. We teach babies how to be boys and girls, and then we're living longer and longer, and all these things begin to be not directly questionable. It may just be physical changes as much as anything, but, you know, it's really fascinating now. And speaking of that, last time you were here, we spoke about, or you told us, that you didn't think that there were any more serious or interesting roles for women to play mm. in the theater than they were when you began. Mm. But in this play, you play Lear, and, and, and the wonderful Jane uh, Howdyshell yeah, plays yeah, Gloucester. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Elizabeth Marvel, who plays Gonorill in this play, right. she played Mark Anthony and Julius Caesar last summer. So seriously, I'm wondering if this is the way to compensate for the lack of roles increasingly. Well, I think certainly in my country, we had a very overt kind of gender bender movement. I mean, there was a company formed uh, all women, and they started out by doing all Shakespeare's history plays. <laughs> Imagine that, you know, and they were hugely successful. Mm. And in one sense, I think that gender bender battle has been won in a sense. It's just expanding it through. I mean, yeah, let's let's have a look at all of the Shakespearean plays, you know, and they're great parts in there, 
the fact that no woman ever stepped onto a stage in Shakespeare's time to do one of his roles, <laughs> uh, we can gracefully slide over that. But yes, I mean, it would be interesting because the plays themselves are so fundamentally fascinating. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Miss Jackson, reading about you for this interview and the one we did last time, the one thing was, was made very clear to me, which is that you have a fierce work ethic. And that for you, what you do with a tough job is just do it. Absolutely. But this is a tough job. Performing Lear, even a, a, a Navy SEAL would have trouble oh, carrying that out. Eight performances yeah. of King Lear a week, my goodness. Where do you find the energy? Well, the energy is there in the play. I mean, once we tap into it, if we tap into it, that energy takes you forward like a, a jet plane or a really fast car. And we have a very good cast. And that shared energy is, is there for all of us. And it's, yeah, it's mm. terrific. By the way, how do you find the audiences responding to this production? How do they compare to British audiences? Well, I, it's hard to make a comparison with this particular play, but the first play I ever did in New York, I was with the Royal Shakespeare Company, and we brought a play called The Marassade to Broadway. And we played that in repertoire in London to totally silent audiences. Not a sound until the end of the play when they... Mm -hmm. There was music in the play and songs, and so we go onto the stage, and the first song, cries of encore, applause. We got laughs. There were a constant response to what we were doing. We came off, the cast came off, and we were looking at each other saying, what are we doing? What is the play we're doing? It was just so dramatically different to what we were used to at home. And that's one of the great things about American audiences. They they like you to know that they're there. I don't mean they heckle or make noises or things like that. I don't mean that. There's just this sense that they're there and, yeah, they're watching. Mm -hmm. What is totally fascinating about this play, and actually now I think about it, it happened in England too, the capacity for the play to really connect with the audience is potent. You can feel them mm -hmm. listening. I mean, you can actually... <laughs> He says, doesn't he, in the play? Well, he does. He says, look with thine ears. And that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is an energy that comes back to the stage. You know, it's amazing. So this production runs through uh, July 7th? I think July 7th is our last uh, week. After that, do you have any projects? No, up? no, no. But then all my life, I mean, every job I've ever done in the theatre, the last night you think, well, that's it. I'm never going to work again. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Jackson, it's been an honor and a pleasure once oh, again. Kind. Thanks Thank so much for joining much. us. Thank you. King Lear, starring Glenda Jackson, will be playing at the Court Theatre until July 7th. For more information, you can visit our website at metrofocus.org. <laughs>